Hello everybody, this is Becky at Aunt Bex Creations and I'm starting a project using the mandala that I did on muslin the other day. I did have some cardboard stick and I got as much of it off as I could. I have hand washed this with like um, a, a cleanser that's made for hand washables. I did lose some of the black dots I did with the slick pen but I'm not worried about that because what I'm making most of this will be toward the bottom of it so this is what I've got I've washed it by hand I laid it on this towel to dry and I'm just gonna iron it on this towel and I've got this on not not steam just just an regular iron and I just want to get it nice and smooth and then I have drawn a pattern and I'm hoping this will work so once I get this nice and smooth or as smooth as I can get it I will come back and show you my next step okay the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a piece of this um, interfacing and I am you I bought a whole bowl to this this is my favorite to use on totes it's not super thick and it's not super thin it's my perfect weight everybody likes to you know to choose an interfacing that works for them this works for me for small bags and I've even made tote bags using this interfacing and it's the Pellon luxury apparel um, it used to be called um, shirt um, interfacing but uh, I could tell you the number on it it's the 950F shirt tailor see I'll show you it's upside down hang on there we go this is what I'm using this is what I always get to make totes and small bags and stuff it's a fusible product and I just love the weight of it and I love how it sews and it works so this will be my next step I'm gonna just cut a piece to fit the back of my project and I'm gonna adhere this fusible interfacing down okay I forgot to turn Jess off so try to ignore it um, the interfacing one side will have a kind of a rough feeling and one's a smooth feeling you want to put the rough side down onto your project not the other way around because if you do you will iron it to your iron so now I'm gonna um, press and lift for 15 second segments overlapping until this whole thing is adhered to the back of my piece okay so the uh, interfacing is on the back and you can see it makes it a little bit more stiff which is perfect for what I want to make okay I folded my piece in half I've located my pattern that I drafted and I'm gonna line this up and center the pattern piece on my piece here and then I'll cut out everywhere there's exposed um, fabric I'll cut those away and then we'll have this pattern piece this will be the exterior of my bag I need to locate a fabric that will work for the lining I don't like to use dark fabrics for linings on bags because what happens is that makes the inside of the bag so dark it's hard to see what's in the bag so I'll probably pick something lighter for the lining and I also need to locate an 8 inch zipper and then I'll be back with you guys this is what the exterior piece will look like after you've cut away those two sections the the bottom tabs and along the edge this is what it should look like and I will be back alright a quick trip to my stash has brought this as will be the lining so what I'm gonna do is put this on here and pin it down and just cut around it so I'll have two pieces that are the same I, yeah I want it just like that and uh, I still haven't located the zipper I need but this brings me closer 
So this is a coral background and I thought it went really well with the bits on here and it's got red in it as well. So I think it will make a great lining for this pencil bag. I just realized that I've given myself a mistake and I need to rector it. So I need to cut this in half right here. So there'll be a half inch, uh, there'll be a seam in the bottom. So I'll lose some of the decoration from the middle here, but it'll still look cool. But you have to have a place to turn the bag right side out after you have installed the zipper. And I forgot that. So that is a side note to remember. So there you go. I just cut right on the on the line that was in the design. So now I have a left and a right side and a left and a right on for the inside for the lining. So next, let me see if I can find an 8-inch zipper. <laughs> All right, I had one 9-inch zipper. So this is the top of the bag up here. So the zipper needs to be along here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer. I've got to look up the instructions on how to do this again because I can't remember at this moment. But I'm going to layer the outside, the zipper, and the interior. And then I'll come back and show you what that looks like after I have the layers pinned. Okay? Okay, as Mary would say, hold the phone. I forgot a step. Okay, you've got to have a couple little one inch squares of your lining fabric. So I just took the squares that I cut out down at the bottom of there of the lining piece and just cut it in half. And that gave me about what I need. What you need to do is, it's still got some bits on it. You're going to line this up with the end of the zipper and you're going to stitch right along next to the stop on the zipper here okay so your stitching will come right under that stop and stitch this in place and then this will fold back okay and then this gives you a more finished look at the top edge and then once you get that one on you will do the same on this other end but to sew it you have to open the zipper some and pin this in place and sew across. So that's the first step. I have attached my zipper foot so that I can get as close as I can to the end of the zipper and I'm going to stitch across there and then I'll show you what the setup for the other end of the zipper. Okay so here's the stitching on there and then when you fold this back it's that close I could have gotten a little bit closer but that'll work now for the other end what I need to do and I can't do this I need to open the zipper and then I'm gonna line this up and do the same thing face down and as close to the end of the zipper as I can get it and I'll have to pin this time because um, that'll all be open because the zipper will be open. Okay, I've pinned these and I'm going to sew this time from the back so that I can make sure my stops are lined up and get as close to the stops as I can and be careful about the pins. I'm going to try to remove them before I sew over them and I will show you what it looks like when I am done stitching. Okay, so that end is now stitched. Let's see if I can do this. So when I turn this over and I fold this back, it'll give a nice finish to the end. And I'm going to gently press that and I'll show you what it looks like if I can with the zipper pulled up like so. And I'll just press this gently, try to keep the iron away from the polyester teeth. And then we'll go to the next step, which is layering the zipper, the lining, and the exterior of the bag. All 
right, because I'm working with what I have on hand, and this is a thrift store zipper. I actually, from apparently, I need an 8 inch zipper and not a 9 inch zipper, but they don't make 8 inch zippers that you can readily find. I have 7 inch zippers, but that would be way too short. So, what I'm going to do is at this end up here, because you're going to sew across anyway, I'm just going to sew across the teeth and add another piece down farther and then I'll just cut away the zipper I'm not going to use and then I'll come back and show you the layering. Alright, so here's my layered piece. I have it pinned together. Alright, it's the fabrics are right sides together. So I've got my my outer piece which is the piece that I hand decorated myself the zipper um, the tab for the zipper is facing the outer piece and then the lining is on top of that and to do this line up your bottom part here and the side edge and then this top edge don't try to match the zipper just get everything lined up so it matches along the top now as you are stitching down along here okay what you're going to need to do when you get to a certain point you're going to stop with the needle down and you're going to open up your layers and close the zipper up so that you can sew on past it without a, making a bulge where that um, zipper pull is because you know it's wider than the zipper so if you just sew along the edge of the zipper here uh, you can feel the teeth in there but I think I'm gonna aim for just maybe I'm gonna measure that I think it's about three-eighths of an inch away from the edge and I'm just gonna sew straight down along there and then I'll show you what we do after that okay I've stitched the seam got a little wonky here at the end I'm not worried about it because the wonkiness is on the lining and I can kind of fudge the seams on the lining later so now you're gonna fold this open like so and I'm gonna need to press very carefully so that I don't get on the the teeth and I'm gonna top stitch close to the edge along here once it's pressed smooth and then I'm going to repeat the same thing for the other side of the zipper so you'll end up with on both sides you'll have like this flappy thing here like this okay and when I do my top stitching I'm not going all the way to the end I'm going to stop where the zipper stops and the reason for that is because you've got to open this up and match match your fronts and sew your side seams and you don't want to have the these layers here sewn together outside the edge of the zipper I hope that makes sense and I will come back once I get the other side of this sandwiched and I'll just show you what that looks like and then we'll sh move on to the next step. Okay, I wanted to show a lesson I learned. Um, the painted fabric does not like to be sewn through. See, I had a little boo-boo right here. I don't know if you guys can see the dark stitches there. It did, the needle did not like going through it, so I stopped. And um, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to keep this bag for myself anyway. Um, so what I did is I stopped and I just flipped it over and sewing from the lining side I could do the top stitching a whole lot easier and it looks so nice on the front side so if you're gonna sew something like this keep in mind that the hand painted fabrics the needle does not like to go through the hand painted fabric first it does okay to sew from the back of the fabric but not down through the front because you get 
this kind of squirrely bit here like I have here at the end. Um, and like I said, I'm going to leave that to remind me not to try to sew through the painted part. So now let me do my layers and sew the other side of the zipper and get it top stitched and we'll go to the next step. Okay, so we've got both the outside pieces sewn to the zipper and the lining pieces sewn to the zipper. So the zipper's here facing to the outside and I got the, the inside. The very first thing you need to do before the next step is open the zipper. If you do not open the zipper, you will not have a way to turn your bag right side out. Okay? So now what we're going to do is take these and match the outside pieces and match the inside pieces. And we'll sew the side seams across here and across here and then the straight end here will sew these, okay? I was correct. You leave a little opening down here at the bottom of the lining, not the outside, but of the lining, because you can hide this on the inside of your bag when you're done. So I would only sew a couple inches from either end on the bottom of the lining and then leave the rest of it open. So leave about three to four inches open Leave enough so your hand can get inside it, okay? Or at least your four fingers. And I'm going to start sewing those, and then I'll be right back. All right, I thought I would come back and just show you how I've got this pinned. All right, so I've got pins straight across. This is the outside of the bag, so i got pins straight across. You're not going to do anything with these corners just yet. In a few minutes, we will. And then I've pinned all along the side. You're going to have to just slow down when it comes to the zipper and work your way over it. I'm going to use about a half inch seam allowance everywhere. Again, on the lining bit, skip these corners for a few minutes. And then I've just put a pin as the seam allowance would go, but then I've put one adjacent to it to tell me to stop there. So I'll stop there and I'll do some, a back stitch. And then I'll come over a ways and start again and do a back stitch there to keep it from coming out and go to the corner, skip the cutout corner and do the other side. All right, and then we'll do the next step. Okay, I've done all of the side and bottom sewing and now we're going to deal with those little square corners. And what you're going to do is you're going to bring the bottom, open your seam allowance up flat and match the side seam with the bottom seam, sorry, with your seams open and then we're just going to stitch straight across there on all four corners, meaning both of the outer and in the lining. And then we'll go to the next step. Alright guys, I got all the corners sewn across in the lining and in the outside. Now the big reveal is you go through this hole you left in the lining and because you left the zipper open you can get to the um, the exterior of the bag and you're just going to pull it right side out and if I had another set of hands I would show you that. Miracle but I don't want to set the tripod up so Hold, and I will be right back. <laughs> okay, so here's the bag. But before we can push the lining down inside, we need to deal with the hole. So what you'll do is you're going to fold the edges like the seam is in, and we're going to pin that closed and then I'm just going to stitch straight across it. The stitching will be on the outside but it's going to be down inside the bag so it's not going to matter. I'll show you what that looks like in just a sec. Okay so that's what the opening now looks like. So now we can set the bag up 
and tuck the lining down inside like so. And then when it's zipped closed, it'll look like that. Go. Oh, I need to do a little bit of pushing with my finger here. Maybe we'll do that on the other end too. Now they got you all set on the table. I can work out, work the lining into the corners, and then I can zip it shut. All right. So there you go. All handmade and decorated by me. And there's where it meets up at the bottom. Um, I could have also done this so the doily was cut in half but went this way. And I think that would be cute too. So maybe the next one I do, the decoration will look like it's coming out of the zipper. You know, so instead of the round being this way, I could do it that way. That would look pretty cool looking too. It, it would be a completely different look. But I like to make the square bottom bags like this because then it stands on the table when you're trying to use it. So y'all will have to leave me some comments and let me know what you think.